Hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am your host, Vortex, from MobileMusicPro.com, your home for mobile music production. And if you're new to the channel, what we do here is we try to help and create more mobile music producers. And don't forget, you can always find more videos just like this one in the description below. So smash those likes and subscribe if you want to learn more about music production on your iOS device. And of course, remember that the more thumbs up this video gets, the more people that can find it, which helps us get more people into mobile music production. And hey guys, we just wanted to thank you so, so much for commenting more and more on our videos, as we have recently seen a considerable uptake in our engagement lately. So please keep asking us questions and keep giving us that feedback, and let's build out this community together. Now, in today's video, we're going to be talking about gain staging. Now, all that gain staging essentially means is having proper signal level at all points in your chain. This really can be an extremely crucial step in your mixing process, especially when working with mixes that are sent to you or otherwise not recorded through your own equipment, where you can properly monitor all points in the chain. Now, the general idea here is to use this technique to create more headroom in your mix by adjusting each track's level pre-fader, which just means that we're actually adjusting the gain before it hits the fader. Once this is done properly, you can then make very small and very minute changes in your fader while keeping it close to 0 dB, resulting in more fader resolution, allowing you to have more control over your mix in its entirety. And finally, we just wanted to give a shout out to David Asher in the comments for actually giving us this idea for today's video. So thanks again, David. We super appreciate it. We do have most of our content generally planned out, but it's always nice to have awesome surprise ideas from our fans like you. And now guys, with that intro aside, let's get right into showing you how to gain stage your tracks in Cubasis 3. All right, welcome everybody. We are wishing you the happiest of the happiest and hope you are having a fantastic day. Now, whether you're working in analog or digital, gain staging is still important because the name of the game is headroom and making sure you have enough of it for the final mixing and mastering process is imperative because as you add more tracks and more sounds, your master fader will get hotter and hotter, which means it will get more and more signal sent to it, increasing that dB that could eventually result in your mix clipping. So gain staging is a way to combat this where we can adjust the gain before it hits the fader so only minimal fader adjustments are required. So for today's video, we're going to be showing you an 8 bar loop mixed with and without gain staging so you can really see the difference. Then we'll actually go through the process of gain staging all the tracks in the loop. And finally, we'll go through a few tips to increase the headroom in your mix. All right, now let's go ahead and get started. So as you can see, we do have our Cubasis 3 project pulled up here, and we'll quickly go through these tracks and these sounds. As usual, all of our drums are labeled in orange, with our bass labeled in green, and our melodies labeled in red. The first tracks will be our drum tracks, including the kick, snare, clap, hats, and impact. And then we have all of these assigned and routed to the drum group bus. And all of the main drums, including the kick, snare, clap, and hats, will be coming from the Trap Drums Sample Kit from iPadBeatMaking.com. And the impact sound is coming from the free EDM sample pack from Cymatics. And our 808 today is going to be coming from Cheese the Producer's 808 drum kit called Stupid 808s. And our main melody today will be coming from Miss Led's sample pack called the Sample Box Volume 1. And this will be available at WeSampleEverything.com. And of course, we'll have the links to all of these sample packs in the description below. And what we have pulled up right now is the version of the project that has not been gain staged just yet. We have in fact mixed the loop, but we have not yet gain staged it just yet. So before we do give this a listen, I want to draw your attention here to the faders. Now as you can see, we do have a bit of a roller coaster situation going on in our mixer. None of these faders, except of course for the drum track, is at 0 dB. In fact, most of them are nowhere near 0 dB. And you can see from the numbers up here, we even have a few that are negative 14 dB and negative 11 dB, quite a ways away from being near 0 dB. And in addition to this, when we play this track, you'll notice that we are clipping in our master fader. So let's go ahead and give this loop a listen to.
All right, now as you can see, we are clipping over here in our master fader. And that is of course something that we do not want. So now let's go ahead and open up the project that has been gain staged and give that a listen. All right, here we are in the exact same project, except this particular project has been gain staged. So first, let's take a look at the mixer. And as you can see, all of the faders here are much closer to 0 dB. And we have much less of a roller coaster type of situation going on in our mixer. As you can see, the most affected fader over here, which is our secondary melody, is only pulled down by about negative 6 dB. The rest are sitting very, very close to 0 dB with some of them in fact still at 0 dB. Now, when we play this loop again, it should sound like it is just about at that same level, but this time we shouldn't clip. So let's go ahead and play this loop now. All right, perfect, and as you can see in our master fader, we never did actually end up clipping. So let's go ahead and add a bit more detail to these faders by clicking on the XL in the top right hand corner. And if we take a look at this track over here, our drum track, if you follow our mouse here, you can see that if we measure from the 0 dB to the 20 dB range here, it's just about a half an inch or so, maybe a quarter of an inch. But then if we do that same measurement down once more, another quarter inch to a half an inch, you can see that now we're at 60 dB. So you can see there is much less fidelity down here when compared to when the fader is at the 0 dB range. Now let's go ahead and make this screen a little bit bigger so we can see this in more detail. So we'll drag this up to be full screen. So you can see here that I can make very minute and fine changes here all around 0 dB. But once you start going down a little bit lower, in most DAWs, the number starts increasing far faster and in larger numbers. And so, by keeping the fader around 0 dB, we can have much more impact with our faders without having to move them very much at all. So let's minimize this again. You see, without gain staging, you'll find that you will be adjusting your faders up and down by a lot, and sometimes as much as 10, 20, and 30 dB. This again makes the mixing process much more difficult as you'll be making much larger adjustments in your faders. And now let's go ahead and walk you through the gain staging process. So we'll close our mixer and let's go ahead and go to our first track, the kick. Now, as we said in the intro, gain staging is essentially adjusting the volume before it hits the fader. And Cubase's 3 makes it really easy to do this. If we look over here in our insert effects, you'll notice that we have this line right here. And when we tap on it, you'll notice that it says pre in the left hand corner. This indicates that anything above this line is going to hit pre-fader. So we can drag this up and down, as you can see, up and down. And when you drag it to the center, you'll notice that the word post shows up. This means that all of the plugins above this line will happen pre-fader, and all of the plugins below this line will happen after the fader. And by default, Cubase's 3 always comes with a channel strip pre-fader. So whenever you do add a new track, by default you will see this channel strip in your insert effects. Now it will be disabled, but it will be there. And of course, to enable and disable our effects, we simply tap the on and off button on the left hand side. Now let's take a look at this channel strip. We'll close the browser, make this a little bit bigger. As you can see in the bottom right hand corner, we have a gain knob. This knob will adjust the volume of the signal before it hits the fader, as long as your channel strip is set to pre. Now you may be thinking that the saturator is going to be turned on here, since the tape icon is lit up green. But in fact the saturator will not be turned on until you start increasing the drive knob. As long as the drive knob is at zero, there will be zero saturation added to the signal. So we can safely use our gain knob without worrying about any additional color being added to the signal. And the channel strip comes in really handy for effects that you'd like to happen before the fader, including a high and low cut EQ. Again, immediately shaping your sound without having to apply an EQ after the fader. So once again, to gain stage our track, all we have to do is enable our channel strip that is automatically added to each one of our tracks and make sure that it is sitting above the pre and is not post fader. 
Once the channel strip is in its default position in the Insert Effects channel, you can then simply just start adjusting the gain knob to your taste. Once again, making sure that your saturator is disabled by making sure that the drive is set to 0 dB. And that's all there is to gain staging your track. You simply repeat this process for every one of your tracks. Once you get your gains properly set for each track, you can then close out of the channel strip and go to your mixer and begin adjusting your faders. And you'll notice that you'll now be moving your faders up and down much less, giving you much more control over your overall mix. Alright, and finally we just wanted to give you a couple of different tips for obtaining more headroom in your mix. Now the first of those tips is going to be to pull your faders down. Now this may seem simple of course, but at the end of the day this simple technique really works. If you get a mix sent to you and it's just immediately blasting and hitting way too hot, simply pull those faders down. Now in mini DAWs you can actually pull multiple faders down simultaneously, however within Cubasis 3 the only way to affect multiple tracks like that is to make sure that they are assigned to a group. Now we do have all of our drums in a drum group, so if we go to our mixer, you'll notice that we can actually affect all of these drums with this single fader. So if our drums were hitting too hot, all we'd have to do is simply pull down this single fader and this would actually reduce the volume for all of our drum tracks. And again, this does sound simple, but you'd be surprised how many newcomers to mixing don't actually apply this technique right away and instead try to do more elaborate things like add additional plugins, or sit there forever and try to readjust individual tracks. And the next tip we'd like to give you for trying to find more headroom in your mix is to optimize your plugins output. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, we do have a reverb here pulled up inside of Cubasis 3, and you'll notice in the far right hand corner, there is a mix knob, but you'll also see the label out above it. Because essentially, the more you turn this up, the more dB and increased loudness will be coming out of this plugin. And almost every single plugin will have an out or a mix knob just like this. So let's take a look at another plugin, like the Stereo With plugin here. Another great plugin built into Cubasis. If we increase the size of this, we can see here that we do have an out knob on the bottom right hand corner. Once again, increasing this will create more dB and make your track louder. And these output knobs really add up when you start using a bunch of plugins. So do make sure to check all the plugins that you're using in all of your tracks and make sure that your plugin is not running your track too hot or in other words, making it louder than it should be. And the final tip that we'd like to give you to achieve more headroom in your mix is by applying a plugin or channel strip both pre and post fader. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, the reason is once you do have your gain staging set here pre-fader, you will then likely apply more effects to treat the track how you want to. Once you have all of these plugins going, it might increase or decrease the overall volume of the track. And once again, we don't want to pull our fader down 10 or 15 or 20 dB. So what we can do then is add an additional channel strip post-fader. And from here, we can adjust our gain once again. So having the ability to control the signal volume both pre and post fader really will give you a huge amount of control over the volume of your track without having to drag your faders all over the place. And that concludes our three tips. Once again, those were to pull your faders down, optimize your plugin output, and add an additional channel strip or plugin post fader. All right, welcome back everybody. We just wanted to say thanks again to everybody for watching the video this far and a special thanks that goes out to everybody who's watching this video live. A special shout out will always go out to you guys. It's been really great hanging out with all of you in the chat every Wednesday and Saturday. So if you never have been to a live premiere yet, make sure to come in and check it out. Now, hopefully in this video, we have made gain staging a little bit more easy to understand so that you're no longer stressing out too much about this topic. Because in the day-to-day -day professional music world, this concept really is super important. And that's of course because the concept of having headroom in your mix is extremely important. And so we hope that some of the things that we've said in today's video will help you achieve that goal. Now we do have a couple of announcements to share with you, so please make sure to leave a comment below on what you think of these new changes. The first of which is that we were thinking of creating our own public Discord chat so that the mobile music army can stay connected 24 seven and have it be a place for newcomers and veterans alike to ask questions about mobile music production. And all of our Patreons, if they would like, will get added to a special Patreon role in the top of the chat with an orange color to their name indicating that they are a patron. 
but again, that is completely optional. And the second bit of news that we'd like to share with you today is that in addition to uploading our videos to just YouTube, we will now be uploading our videos to Instagram as well, specifically to the IGTV section of our profile. And this is because we decided that we no longer want to force people off their platform of choice. So if you are on Instagram, you'll now be able to watch our full videos without ever having to leave the app or the website. So if you are watching this for the first time on Instagram, we just wanted to welcome you on this new and exciting journey. And the final bit of news today that we'd like to share is that we signed up for buymeacoffee.com. This is a great website that allows you to make one-time donations to the channel instead of only having the subscription model option via patreon.com. So if you don't prefer the subscription model that Patreon offers, then definitely check out buymeacoffee.com slash mobile music pro to at any time make a one-time donation to the channel. And so if you are enjoying the content on this channel, please let us know by smashing those likes, subscribing, and commenting. And as always, we very, very much appreciate everybody who shares out the show. And so until next time, everybody, keep talking music and we'll see you later.